Well, hello, and thank you for joining me. My name is Miss Wendy. I'm with the Rockbridge Regional Library here in Lexington, and it's story time. Happy Thursday to you, everybody. Uh, and as you know, this week we are talking all about Groundhog Day, which is next Tuesday. So shall we begin? Okay, so we always begin with our hello song. So we'll salute and say hello. This is a sign language for hello. And then friends are your two fingers and they give each other a hug. And then it's time to say hello. Okay, we'll do it twice. One, two, three. Hello friends. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time to say hello again. Hello friends. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time to say hello. Hello my friends. Okay, so as I mentioned before, Groundhog Day is next Tuesday. And what's so funny and important about Groundhog Day? Well, groundhogs on February 2nd, they come out of their hole and they look around. And you know what? If they see their shadow, that tells us, oh goodness, six more weeks of winter. If they see their shadow, it's gonna be winter so much longer. But if they come out and they don't see their shadow, it's gonna be an early spring. So we'll find out on Tuesday if we're gonna have an early spring or if it's gonna be winter a bit longer. So let's get warmed up. Of course, the first thing we wanna do, move my camera. There we go, that's better. Now we can move around. All right, so are you ready for a story? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. Now let's move around a little bit and get our blood flowing. Let's jump up and down. If you're ready for a story, jump up and down. If you're ready for a story, jump up and down. Ooh, that was the wrong note. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, jump up and down. Very good. What should we do next? Let's twirl. If you're ready for a story, do a twirl. If you're ready for a story, do a twirl. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, do a twirl. Okay, I'm almost ready for a story, but I think I might need to do one more thing. If you're ready for a story, touch your toes. If you're ready for a story, touch your toes. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, touch your toes. There they are. Okay. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. See if you can freeze. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. I almost forgot to sit. <laughs> that would be a problem. Okay. Now it's time to read. So let's take five deep breaths just to get our bodies and our minds ready for learning. Okay, so first finger and thumb together. Deep breath in, hold it, deep breath out. Middle finger and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. 
Very good, my friends. Third finger, ring finger and thumb. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Pinky and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. And thumbs up because you like groundhogs. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Very good. Okay, so let's see what books we have today about groundhogs in Groundhog Day. Okay, here's our first one. <clears throat> this is called Groundhog's Day Off by Rob Perlman and illustrated by Brett Helquist. Groundhog Day! News, will winter ever end? And this is brought to us by Bloomsbury Publishers. Every year, on one special day in February, Groundhog wakes up extra early. Crowds of people gather outside. Locals, tourists, even the mayor. News reporters with large microphones and big shiny teeth are waiting. Every year, they ask Groundhog the same things. Are there going to be six more weeks of winter? Is spring around the corner? Bring on spring. We want sun. But one thing they never ask Groundhog is about him. No, how are you feeling? No, have you seen any good movies lately? No, do you like mushrooms on your pizza? Not even... Who does your fur? Groundhog has more to offer than just the forecast, but that's what happens year after year. Well, not this year. It looks like there's a note left on a mailbox. Here's what it says. Dear people, I'm a groundhog with feelings and things to say, but all you care about is the weather. So this year I'm going on vacation. You'll have to find someone new. Sincerely, Groundhog. P.S. I'm taking my shadow with me. Groundhog packed up his robe, slippers, magazines, and shadow and headed for the spa. The townspeople didn't know what to do. The mayor thought long and hard and finally announced, we'll hold all auditions for a new Groundhog. Ooh, look at all these people. They want to try. Oh, people, look at all these animals who want to try out. Lots of animals wanted to try out for the role. Oh, raccoon's trying. He's got a hat. Elephant was just too big. Spring! He can't even fit through. Ostrich got the whole thing backwards because he stuck his head in the hole instead of outside of the hole. Monkey was asked to leave after an unfortunate banana cream pie incident. Bats, owls, moles, and possums schedules didn't work out because they're nocturnal. They're not going to get up in the morning to do the job, are they? Poor puppy. He suffered from stage fright. And Sheldon, well, his shadow just wouldn't behave. This is terrible, the mayor cried. The only one animal right, there's only one animal right for this job. Groundhog had been relaxing when he heard a news report. Nobody has Groundhog's flair for the dramatic. Nobody can wake up as early as he does. No one, the grandma, the grand, <laughs> the mayor said, pausing, is as special as Groundhog. Ooh. Groundhog couldn't believe his ears. They do think of me as more than just a weather vane. And with that, he threw on a towel and whistled for a taxi. Take me home! Groundhog tunneled under the stage and popped out. Ta-da! The audience stood and cheered. The reporters asked Groundhog all the questions he had always hoped they would ask. Where did you go on vacation? Which team are you rooting for in the playoffs? Do you prefer chunky or smooth peanut butter? 
Is that your real fur? <laughs> Will you do this for real tomorrow? Groundhog stopped signing autographs. Tomorrow, he said. The reporters nodded. Tomorrow is Groundhog Day. You came back just in time. Well then, no time to talk. I've got to get to bed early. The next morning, Groundhog woke up extra, extra early. He poured himself a cup of warm mint tea and peeled out of his, and peeked out of his hole. And this time, the reporters asked him about much more than the weather. What would we do without you? Bagels or donuts? What would you do with a million dollars? Seriously, is that really your fur? Exclusive Groundhog tells all. Oh boy, oh boy. You like me. You really like me, Groundhog said with a huge smile. He finally felt like everyone cared about him. He was very happy. That is, until he climbed back down into his hole. Turned the television on and saw that Bunny had hopped away. Auditions would be held in the spring. I quit. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, see, Bunny had a good idea. He wants to do what Groundhog did. Take a vacation by the ocean. Good choice. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed that book about Groundhog Day. Now, it's funny. Groundhogs and shadows are very important, and they go hand in hand on Groundhog Day. So, I thought it'd be fun if we sung a groundhog song. Yes, there is a groundhog song. <laughs> and I can teach it to you. And also, here is my little friend. I like to call him Bill. I know Phil is the famous one, but this is Bill. So Bill's going to join us. <clears throat> so here's how it goes. It kind of sounds like I'm a little teapot. And so that's the melody. And here's how it goes. I'll do it once to show you, and then we can do it together. Okay, it's called Little Groundhog. One, two, three. I'm a little groundhog sleeping in my hole. Will I see my shadow? Only I will know. If I see my shadow, more winter there will be. More cold and snowy days for you and me. So that's the Groundhog song. What do you think, Bill? Pretty good? <laughs> okay, let's try it again together. One, two, three. I'm a little groundhog sleeping in my hole. Will I see my shadow? Only I will know. If I see my shadow, more winter there will be. More clouds, or more cold and snowy days for you and me. That's a really fun one to sing, especially next Tuesday on Groundhog Day. So, how about we read another book? But this time, it's about shadows. Now, this is a book about shadows. Because shadows and groundhogs, they just go together. And apparently, shadows and rabbits go together too. This is called The Black Rabbit. And it's by Philippa Leathers. Ooh, looks like there's a map. There's the bunny. And this comes to us from Candlewick Press. And there's the bunny. Rabbit woke up one morning and stepped out of his burrow into the bright sunlight. It was a beautiful day. But something was wrong. He was not alone. Rabbit was scared. Go away, Black Rabbit, he cried. But the rap Black Rabbit did not move. What is it? It's his shadow. Rabbit ran, but the black ra rabbit ran right behind him. Rabbit ran even faster. 
The black rabbit won't find me here, thought Rabbit, and he hid behind a tree. But when Rabbit stepped out behind, from behind the tree, there was the black rabbit right in front of him. Maybe he's not a good swimmer like me, thought Rabbit, and he jumped into the river and swam to the other side. But as he pulled himself up onto the bank, the black rabbit climbed out of the water too. What do you want? cried Rabbit, trembling. Why are you following me? But the black rabbit did not reply. Rabbit began to run again, faster than he had ever run before, straight into the deep, dark wood. Welcome to the deep, dark wood. The forest was dark and quiet. The black rabbit was nowhere to be seen. Why do you think that is in a forest? You can't see a shadow. It's because there's no sun shining down, no light to cast a shadow. With a sigh of relief, Rabbit sat down and nibbled on a carrot until he noticed two eyes shining brightly in the dark. Oh no, thought Rabbit. The black rabbit has found me. Ooh. <gasps> but it was not the black rabbit. <gasps> that guy. That guy is scary. The rabbit ran as fast as he could out of the deep dark forest with Wolf close behind him. <gasps> he tripped. Rabbit scrambled to his feet, but it was too late. His eyes shut tight and waited for Wolf to attack. Uh -oh. But nothing happened. Oh, what do you think's happening? <gasps> because there, standing in the sunlight behind Rabbit was Black Rabbit. Rabbit smiled and somehow knew that the black rabbit was smiling back. Hand in hand, they bounced off across the field. And there they go. So his shadow helped him the whole time, and he didn't know. Good job, black shadow, black rabbit. <laughs> That's a really fun book about shadows. Now, I lo love shadows, and so I thought it would be fun if we figured out how to sing a song using shadows. Okay, so I thought it'd be fun to sing a song about shadows. Now this is one I know you know. Old MacDonald had a farm. Look, here's our farm. So we're gonna sing that and we will add the animals as we sing. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a horse, E-I-E-I-O. With a nay nay here and a nay nay there, here a nay, there a nay, everywhere a nay nay. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O And on that farm he had a... What is it? Chicken! E-I-E-I-O With a cluck cluck here and a cluck cluck there Here a cluck, there a cluck, everywhere a cluck cluck Old MacDonald had a farm E-I-E-I-O and on that farm he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O, with an oink oink here and an oink oink there, here an oink, there an oink, everywhere an oink oink, old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a what is it? A cow! E-I-E-I-O With a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there 
Here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo moo. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Oh, there's one more animal. And on that farm he had a... I'm running out of space. <gasps> what is it? Oh, <laughs> a duck. E-I-E-I-O. With a quack quack here and a quack quack there. Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. All right, look at all the fun animals you have. A duck, a horse, a chicken, a pig, and a cow. Excellent. Shall we read another book? Let's do it. Okay, let's see what our next book is all about. Oh, yes. This book is called Brownie Groundhog and the February Fox. This is by Susan Blackby, Blackaby and illustrated by Carmen Segoya. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen here. And this comes to us from Sterling Publishers. Let's see. On the second day of February, a groundhog named Brownie woke up. She shimmied up the passageway of her cozy den and shoved aside a fluff of snow blocking her door. The air smelled sweet and cold. When she when she stood up, her shadow stretched across the frosted field. I was afraid of that, said Brownie. Shadows mean more winter, and more winter means waiting. Wait, 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 Brownie stomped her foot. Phooey! A small, scrawny fox heard Brownie grousing. His ears twitched. He licked his chops and crouched to pounce. Uh-oh. Watch out, Brownie. Bam! Before Brownie could take two steps, the fox knocked her flat. Brownie's basket went flying as they tumbled into a snowbank. The fox panted and puffed. Hold still, he said. I'm trying to eat you for breakfast. Don't be silly, said Brownie, wiggling free. You're too late for breakfast. Really? Fox frowned. What about lunch? Too early, said Brownie. You'll have to wait. I hate waiting, said Fox. I know what you mean, said Brownie. Brownie pet picked up her basket and crunched across the clearing, leaving tracks in the snow. The fox scampered all along beside her. I don't suppose you've noticed any signs of spring, said Brownie. The fox's tummy, gr tummel, tummy grumbled. You, he said. Besides me, said Brownie. Then no, said Fox. Brownie listened for tweets and twitters, but didn't hear any. She looked for shoots and sprigs, but didn't see any. Fiddle, said Brownie. Not a single smudge, smidge of spring. When they came back to the pond, Brownie stopped to listen. Not a clink or a crackle, she said. This ice is frozen solid. Brownie sat down under a tree and scowled. Drat, she grumbled. Six weeks to wait and nothing to do. Lunch, suggested Fox. His little claws looked sharp. Brownie scooted out of reach. You can't eat yet, she said. You haven't worked up an appetite. I feel appetitey, said the fox. Well, you aren't, said Brownie. Why don't you clear the snow off the pond? That might do the trick. The fox stepped into the pond. He swept his tail back and forth, sending up a snowy spray until the ice gleamed like green glass. Magnificent, Brownie clapped. Look what you've done. I've worked up an appetite, said Fox. He smiled, showing his pointy teeth. You've made a place to skate, said Brownie. She wrapped her scarf around her neck. Come on, she said. 
Nothing works up an appetite like skating. The fox grabbed Brownie by the tail as she slid into the pond. They glided across the ice. They twirled and swirled. They looped and swooped. They skated figure eights until their knees buckled. Gasping and giggling, they helped each other struggle up the bank. That was so much fun, said Brownie. It was, said Fox, and my appetite is all worked up. Brownie bristled. No wonder, she said. You skated right past lunch. Now you'll have to wait till dinner. No, moaned Fox. He hung his head. Even his tail sagged. I want to eat you now. No more waiting. I know just how you feel, said Brownie. Brownie steered a, the limp little fox over to a tree. She helped him sit down and tucked his fluffy tail around his feet. Then she wound her scarf around and around the fox's skinny middle, tying him to the trunk. The fox tried to raise his paws. The scarf pulled tight. Stuck, he said, wiggling his shoulders. Brownie grabbed her basket. Goodbye, she said. The fox stared up at her. You're leaving me? The fox threw his head back and howled. Wah! There he goes. Brownie took three steps quickly up the path, glad to be on her way. Hop, hop, hop. Hup, 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 sobbed the fox. Brownie took three more steps, quite slowly, feeling a bit bad. P -p 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 -p, whimpered the fox. Brownie stopped and turned around. Oh, for Pete's sake, she said, stop crying. If I promise to keep, if you promise to keep your teeth to yourself, I will make us a snack. The fox sniffled. I promise, he said. What are we having? Brownie sat down and pulled a thermos out of her basket. Cocoa, she said, perfect for dunking cinnamon toast. Will I like it? asked Fox. You will love it, said Brownie. Open up and remember no snapping. Brownie dropped a tasty tip of the soaky toast into Fox's mouth and then took one for herself. While they traded bites, slurping and gulping, a robin stopped to peck at their crumbs scattered in the snow. She teased a piece of yarn from Brownie's scarf and then fluttered up to the tree. Look, said Brownie, our first sign of spring. Besides you, said the fox. When it was time to go, Brownie helped the fox to his feet. What are we doing tomorrow? he asked. More waiting, said Brownie. Waiting and skating, said the fox. Will you bring something yummy? Something yummy to share, said Brownie. And they head in for home. Yeah, it's better to be friends than try to eat your friends. <laughs> and also, I think Brownie did a really good job of empathizing with the fox, even though the fox was threatening to eat him which was very nice. <laughs> so there's a fun little book about groundhogs. They're very mysterious little creatures. All right, my friends. Be sure on next Tuesday, February 2nd, you can go outside and pretend to be a groundhog and have a look. See if you can find your shadow. If your shadow is right there, six more weeks of winter. But if your shadow isn't there, if it's cloudy and you don't see a shadow, it's going to be an early spring. So give it a try next Tuesday. But until then, you have to remember to wash your hands. Okay, we'll do it twice. Tops and bottoms. One, two, three. Tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms. In between. In between. Rub them all together. Rub them all together. Now they're clean squeaky clean again tops and bottoms tops and bottoms in between in between rub them all together rub them all 
together now. They're clean, squeaky clean. Very good, my friends. And until next time, I will see you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile, give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon. Out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear. Wave goodbye, butterfly. See you next week.